Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Good Old Boys Fishing. We are heading down to Sargent, Texas again. It is Thursday evening, getting down a day early, getting down there late at night, it's 8 p.m. That's okay though, uh, tomorrow I'll be working remotely, Mel and the kids will be able to go to the beach. I'm excited, we got a full weekend, we have a softball tournament on Saturday, I'm gonna try to get some fishing in tomorrow evening and maybe Sunday, get you guys a full weekend video. Another thing I'm really excited about, I've got some new crab traps in the back of the truck, Combined with what Jim has down there, we now have four crab traps, so we should be able to really produce a good amount of blue crabs and do a seafood catch and cook for you guys, do a little crab boil. As always, we're glad to have you guys along with us. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe, tell your friends about us, and we will see you guys when we get down to Sargent. So we didn't do any fishing today. We did go down to the beach so the kids could take a swim, but we are about to uh, do a little catch and cook, a little boil them up. I'll show you what we got. All right, about to do some crab trap checking. See if we can pull in some blue crabs. Oh, that was a fine bait fish. It looks like it was fed well. <laughs> what we got here? Oh, we got one. Oh, we got one. This is a great example. See, the holes on the side are made, uh, what is it, two and... You know, I like, don't recall. It's like two and a quarter, seven eighths or something like that, but it's right at the size that basically lets any crab that would generally be under your five inches right out that hole. Yep, undersized crabs can escape. And he is not undersized, and he will not escape his fate of the boiling pot. Oh, there we go. There we go. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, four nice crabs. Well, one of them is too small. He'll go back, but yep. the other three are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Before they go in the boiling pot. Any last wishes, guys? Hey, you got... I'm like, I got flip-flops on. <laughs> hey, he's mad. Yep, that, that would have been my, that would have been my pinky toe. Yeah. Okay. Here. All right, got a mess of crab and ice chest ready for the boiling pot. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. We're gonna do some cangrejos, and we got some little tiny shrimp here that we'll probably cook up with them. That'll be our next uh, our next meal down here. The size of the shrimp we were able to get this weekend was huge. Well, we're gonna do some fresh corn here. I don't really like to bolt the uh, frozen corn as much because it gets a little soggy, I guess you would say. Yeah, soft. Um, mushy and, and full of liquid. The fresh corn, when you boil it, still has a pop to it, even when it's fully cooked. And then these, actually, I, only H-E-B really, I think. These are great little potatoes. I love those. Yeah, and so I tried to do something to match that, so I mixed up the yellow baby golds. These are kind of, uh, well, they're just very tender. It's a good going potato. Actually, they make a great mashed potato. And then some red potatoes, just because I couldn't find these. These are H-E-B type of thing, but anyway, yep. they're great. And just shucking the corn, we're gonna cut it into three pieces each, so it doesn't burn your hands when it's hot. You pull it out of the pot and try to eat it. And then, I almost hate to give up my secret recipe, but you don't know it all. There is some boil, and this is kind of, sort of, my secret recipe. Um, even though it's in Spanish, this is, uh, well, here it is, chicken bouillon. Nothing makes seafood sweeter and easier tasting or easier to eat than chicken bouillon powder, because why doesn't everybody say, you know, people say, hey, it tastes like chicken. That's it, everything tastes like chicken. Well, you might as well add some chicken flavoring. That's it right. It cuts some of the harshness of the seafood, if, especially if it's not like 100% super fresh, like frozen uh, uh, snow crab legs. And just because there's no place around here to get unfrozen snow crab legs. <laughs> okay, so we've got a couple of blue crabs that just came out of the traps. They've been on ice water, so they're very docile makes them easier to work with, but they're not completely dead, so they're still fresh going in the pot. We've got a couple blue crabs here. One of them doesn't look as blue. I think it's just that he spends a lot of time hiding underneath the dock and gains a little bit more algae on his shell, maybe a more uh, immobile feeder, but either way, got into the trap and is ready to hit. So 
looks like both we have both male crabs here the female is going to be a larger breastplate here the first thing you're going to do with the crab is put the corner down on whatever table you're working with grab the swimmer leg with one thumb and the other pointed claw or the point of the shell with your other thumb pop the top off and you're going to split the crab in half into two pieces this is the male sexual organ you're going to remove that then you're going to remove these are lungs crab has lungs and gills the gills are actually inside of the shell here so there's the differentiate difference between the gills and the lungs then you're going to crack crack the face off here this intestinal matter if you do a fling no longer there same thing with this side take off the lungs take off the face fling no longer there this Beautiful. is pure clean blue crab meat we'll put it in the pot and we'll show you for instance that crab is still moving it was just very very cold so we'll put them in the pot and show you what we got when they're done cooking and corn. So first step, these are going to cook for probably five minutes and then the raw blue crab is going to go in for 15 minutes. Okay, this is the secret to making an actual flavorful somewhat spicy crab boil is you retain some of it. After you boil all your crab or shrimp or whatever, we're going to turn the burner off and let it steep it's going to absorb some of the crab seasoning inside and moisten everything. But it won't be spicy yet until you throw it in an ice chest and sprinkle this over the top. Then that seeps into the pores of all your food and also, of course, onto your face with your hand. We've got lights, camera in action. Okay. The shrimp, the blue crab, the raw blue crab, and our uh, corn and our seasonings have been in there for a little over 15 minutes. Shrimp only takes two minutes. No crab. Previously frozen, but of course it is now thawed. This only takes two minutes. You only want to roll the boil through this to get the seasonings into the pores, or at least start the seasonings into the pores. This is pre-cooked, so it doesn't need a whole lot of heat. Once two minutes expire, we put the lid on top, turn the heat off, let it soak, and then move it to our ice chest. Bringing it back to a boil, looking really good. Everything is done. We've pulled it out. We got to sit in an ice chest. Jim has layered it up. He does a layer and then he does seasonings and he does oranges and another layer, more seasonings, more oranges. And the truth is the longer you let it sit in this ice chest under about two hours, the better and better it'll get. So we are looking forward to eating and uh, I'm starving. So I'm gonna let you folks just watch and we're gonna make us a plate and chow down. And we are just about ready to chow down. We'll let you know what we think of it. Snow crab here. Jim's oil recipes are just incredible. That came out beautifully. Nothing quite like a crab claw. All the other pieces are good, but some about that claw because they use it all the time. It just has the softest, most tasty meat. Mmm, so good. I could live off this stuff. My God, it's good. Jim has went home. He had a long day of shoveling dirt. 
setting pavers in place, but he took plenty with him to eat when he gets back to his place. But this stuff is incredible. This right here is Anglegate recipe, Polish sausage made from venison that uh, Jim killed this year or last year, 2019. Incredible sausage. Uh, if you need a sausage made, make sure you check out Anglegate. They know how to do it right. Or rather, Westwood Wild Game now. They've changed their name. But uh, yeah, make sure if you shoot a deer this year, make sure you hit Jim Hughes up. He will process your deer and make it incredible. Taters, precious. <laughs> That's going to be the end of this video. Thanks for watching our Catch and Cook. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to hit that like, hit that subscribe, and share our channel. Help us grow this thing so we can bring you a lot more videos in the future. We've got a lot of cool stuff planned out and lined out. We'll get through one weekend at a time and share it with you as it comes. We are now headed out the door, heading to El Campo for Katie's softball tournament, and that will be the beginning of the next video. All right, everybody, tight lines till next time. See you on the next trip.